Signature Edit is one of the websites you can get free or five for parties and maybe build your portfolio as a retoucher. There is more. I'll also be sharing with you guys how you can get free overlays and optical snoot effect. And as a bonus, I'll show you how you can actually apply those overlays and optical snoot effects on your photos. Let's jump right into it. First website I'm going to share with you guys is a website where you can get free raw headshots, photos, or beauty images. So just open your Google Chrome or any browser you use and just type Dirty Studio right here and just click on this free raw photos right here. So once this website open, just scroll all the way down and you're going to see different headshots from different photographers. So choose any one you like and just download it. And to download, let's say I like this one right here from Wale Visuals, which is this first one right here. To download it, all I have to do is just click on it. I just going to open in another layer for me just like this and by the way you can also download this with your phone and all you have to do is just click here download right here i just going to download to your pc that's all you need now on that website you can use to get free files is signature edits so just come to your search bar again and just search for signature edits like this now the first result you see is the website just click on free raw files right here and once you click on free raw files you are going to see different raw files so all the image you are seeing right here all of them are raw files so you can just scroll all the way down and just pick anyone you like you want to use for parties or anyone you want to use your portfolio just make sure when you're using these images make sure you're tagging the photographers or make sure you're tagging signature edits on your photos so you have different photos to choose from so these are the two websites I actually used to get free of files for parties or free of files to beat my portfolio. And there is more. Let me just show you one more. You can actually use the Retouching Academy website. So let me just search on Retouching Academy. Retouching Academy. Academy of files. So just search that on Google and just click on files for retouching parties right here, which is this first one. So you can see right here, we have free and premium files for parties. So you can even buy real files if you want, but we are here for the free versions. So just scroll all the way down or you are going to see free for practice right here and from here you can just choose any one you want to download and click on download right here so that's the free ones for this retouching academy so these are some of the websites you can actually get free raw file for parties now let me show you how you can get free overlays and free optical snoot effects now if you don't know what optical snoot is optical snoot is a light modifier that you can use to shape light or change pattern of light or add textures to light and there's a way you can actually achieve that using photoshop if you don't have money to get the optical snoot before i show you how to actually apply it let me show you how you can actually get those effects all you have to do is come back to your google again and on your search bar just search for pinterest so once that open just click on this first one right here Pinterest. If you haven't logged in, you have to log in or create an account. So the next thing you have to do is just come here and just search for optical snoot effect. So I'm going to search for it. Optical snoot and click on OK. All right. So this is an example of the optical snoot effect right here. All right. So let's click on this one right here. So I'm going to click on this. So these are the effects. I'm going to click on this one right here. I'm just going to open it. I'm going to click on this three dots right here. I just click on download image right here i just going to download for me now if you scroll the way down you're going to see similar snoot effects so you can just choose any one you want to download and download so let's scroll down and see if i like any one let's check this out i think i like these stars right here i'm going to open it like this and i'm going to download these stars right here okay now to download just click on this three dot icon again and just click on download image now you can see you have varieties of options which you can choose from now that you successfully download them, let me show you how I can actually apply it inside of Photoshop. So to apply them, just open your Photoshop. So after retouching my image and I want to apply that effect, I'm going to make sure I create a stamp visible layer by pressing on Ctrl Shift Alternate E. And just going to merge all the layers and just open it for me above. So you can see right here we have layer 1. Now to apply that effect, I'm just going to select the subject out of the background. Now to select the subject out of the background, I'll pick my quick selection tool and just click on select subject right here. Now you can zoom in and just make sure the selection is accurate. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to invert this selection by pressing on Ctrl Shift I. Now, once I invert that selection, the background now is selected. I'm going to press on Ctrl J. Once I press on Ctrl J, I successfully remove the subject from the background. So, if I just turn off this layer below, you can see we have just the background and the subject is no longer on the background. All right. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to rename this layer one subject, which is our subject layer. I rename this layer two, which is the background layer, background for better understanding all right so we have our background layer we have our subject layer next thing i'm going to do i'm going to make sure my subject layer is selected so instead of making the selection again what i can do i'm going to hold control with this subject layer selected hold control and click on this background layer and bring back the selection 
Now I'm going to invert the selection and just make sure only the subject is selected. So I press Ctrl Shift I again to bring back the selection to the subject. All right. So I'm going to add a layer mask just like this. Now the reason why I add the layer mask, I just don't want to remove the subject from the background. I want to hide the subject. So with this layer mask, I've hide the subject. So I can bring back the subject if I want to or make any modification if I want to. All right. Now next I'm going to do, I'm going to select my background layer and bring my background layer below the subject layer just like that. Now next I'm going to do, I'm going to bring those smooth effects set of Photoshop right now and apply them. So I'll come back to my download. So I'm going to click and drag it inside a new layer just like this. I'm just going to open like this inside of Photoshop. And that's what I can do. I can come to my home and just click on open. I come to my download and just click on open. I just go to open inside of Photoshop. What I can do from here with the object selection tool, so I can just click object selection tool and just make a selection of only the round cycle, just like this. I'm just going to select only the cycle for us, as you can see. And I can just press on Ctrl C to copy, just like this, to copy only the cycle right there, Ctrl C, and just come back to this image right here and just press on Ctrl V to paste it. Now once I press on Ctrl V to paste, you can see it's not showing right here because it's behind the subject. So if I take this layer above the subject, you can see it's showing right here. Now what I can do from here, I can just press on Ctrl T to bring it to some tool and just resize it to make it more bigger. Just like this. And just take it down behind my subject layer. So just take it in between your background layer and your subject layer to paste it behind your subject layer. Now what you can do from here, just change the blend mode from normal to screen sometimes if you apply it like this you are going to see some white borders around it it's because this side right here are white so that's why you have those white borders let me show you how you can actually remove them with this layer selected let me just rename this layer snoot effects now what you're going to do pay close attention with this snoot layer selected just add the layer mask like this once that layer mask selected pick your normal brush tool make sure your foreground color is set to black because the layer mask is on white and just paint it over those white to remove it just like that. Just paint it on those lines right there to remove it just like that. Like I see, we've removed those lines. Now to make this look even more realistic, we're just going to blur it a little more. So with this snoot layer selected, not the layer mask, with the main snoot layer selected, come to your filter, come to your blur, click on Gaussian blur right here and just blur it to the radius of, just take the radius up and see which one works for you. So I think 15 works for me like this. I'm gonna click on okay. So you can see, this is the before and the after iPhone here. You can choose to reduce the opacity if you want to make it look more realistic. And you can also choose to make it more bigger or more smaller if you want. I think like this works for me. And also let me just show you a quick tip. Now if you want to change the color right there. So let's say I want to change the color of this optical smooth. I'm going to come to my adjustment layer, click on solid color adjustment layer and just pick any color at first. So this color, I just pick gray. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold alternate. I'm going to see this clippy icon and just clip it to the only the optical snoot. Now you can see the way it's looking. It's not looking good at all. What you can do with the solid color layer selected, just change the blend mode from normal to darken or multiply. So I think darken works for me. And from here, to change the color, you can just double click on this green right here and just play with this slider right here to change the color to any color you actually want. So I think this color works for me. I'm going to take it a little bit to this side. So let's take it up a little bit. All right. So I think this color works for me. All right. So let me just group them. This is the before and the after. The before and the after. So from here, you can just to reduce the opacity if you want. Now let me show you how you can get full overlays and how you can actually apply them inside of Photoshop. Now you can come back to your Pinterest right here. And this time, it depends on the kind of overlay we are looking for. Now, let's say I want a cloud artistic overlay. All I have to do is come to the search and just search for cloud painting like this. I just going to show me different overlay you want. So I actually like this one right here. It's looking really, really good. So this first one right here works for me. So I'm not going to download this one. I think it's looking really, really good. So to download, click on this three dots right here. Just click on download image. I just going to download for you. So you can see similar. If you want similar, just go all the way down and get to see similar overlays. Wow, you can see some beautiful overlays right here. I also think I like this one right here. I'm going to open this. So to download this image, I'm going to click on these three dots right here and click on download image. I just going to download that image. So you can select any overlay you want. So if you want a different type of overlay, 
you can just come here and search that overlay. So from here, you can search a different overlay. It just depends on what you want. What value do I want right here? Uh, let me think. Um, okay, let's say I want a texture background overlay. I'm going to come here and just click on texture background. Texture background right here. And that's just going to load. So from here, you can see you have different texture background right here. I think I like this big background right here. I'm going to open this one. And just download this one this one is looking really good so come to this three dots right here and click on download image i just going to download now to see similar just scroll the way down and i'm going to see similar something similar to this brick wall so you can see this one right here is looking really good so just pick any one you actually want as your overlay so with this method you can get unlimited overlay just depending on what you want now if i just come back to my download you can see the overlays we just downloaded right here these two right here now let me just show you how you can actually apply them inside of photoshop all right so i'll come back to photoshop so let's use this image right here so after i finish my screen touching the same thing we did earlier i'm not going to cut out my subjects from the background all right so i'll pick my quick selection tool or any selection tool you use so i'm going to click on select subjects i'm just going to select my subjects for me now i want to select this tool which is stated down on so i'll pick on my object selection with my object selection tool selected i'm just going to hover around this tool and it's going to select this tool for me so I'm going to hold shift and just click on it and it's just going to add this tool to the selection for me just like that automatically but if you don't have the latest version of photoshop you can just use your pen tool or your lasso tool to do it manually so I'm going to add this part of the selection as well so I'm going to hold shift and just drag and just do it like this and just going to add that part to the selection so you can actually take your time to make your selection more precise but I'm just going to continue for the sake of this tutorial all right after selecting the subject what i'm going to do i'm going to invert the selection by pressing on ctrl shift i and right now the background is selected so i'm going to press on ctrl j to remove the subject from the background so i'm going to rename this layer up background okay and rename this layer one subject for better understanding all right all right so next i'm going to do i'm going to bring back that selection so my subject layer selected I'm going to hold control, click on the background layer and just bring back the selection. And this time just invert the selection to make sure only the subject is selected. I press no control shift I. So right now only the subject is selected. Now I'm going to add the layer mask to hide the subject so I can actually modify it later. So come to your layer mask and just click on layer mask right here to hide the subject. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring the background layer below my subject layer. Now to apply those overlay, I'm going to come back to my download and just click and drag it inside of photoshop so let's try this one i'm going to click and just drag this inside of photoshop and just drop it on top of the image like this sometimes it might show behind the subject and other times it might show above the subject so if you show something like this and just cover the subject you don't need to panic just click on it and just drag it below the subject layer right here so i'm just going to resize it to fit the background so like this works for me all right and also, I don't want it to affect this down right here. So I want it to affect only the backdrop. So I'm going to leave it like this. All right. So that this works for me. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So just resize it the way you want. So like this works for me. I'm going to click on OK. All right. So what I can do from here, I can just change the blend mode from normal to soft light. Just like that. So once I change it to soft light, what I can do from here, I can choose to just reduce the opacity like so. Or what I can do, I can use to blur it. So I come to my filter, come to blur, click on Gaussian blur, and just blur it the way I want to make it look even more realistic. So I feel like this works for me. Um, 22 works for me. I'm going to click on OK. From here, I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit, just like that. Now let's try another overlay. So I'll come back to my download again, and just click on this one right here, and just bring it to Photoshop, and just apply it and just resize it the way i want so i think like this works for me resize it even more so like this works for me i'm going to click on ok now from here i'm just going to come to my blend mode change it from normal to soft light or overlay so just play with it overlay and soft light actually works so soft light works better i'm going to click on soft light and from here i can just choose to reduce the opacity if i want just like this so i think this one really works and also i can just come to filter and just blow it even more so come to Gaussian Blur and just blur it a little bit to make it fit perfectly like this. This is the before and this is the after. The before and the after. Now that you know how to get Fourier files, to learn how to retouch those Fourier files, click on this playlist right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.